So I'm Paul Sappho. I teach at Stanford and I lead the future studies and forecasting track here at Singularity University. Paul, since you are an expert on futures studies, which possibilities do you see for Korea? Which new industries, which new technologies? <laughs> um, I think the biggest opportunity for Korea here is basically Korea has to flee into the future that all the industries that Korea has been built on are now being disrupted by things like 3D printing, by the new biotechnology revolution. Uh, we've seen the hollowing out of manufacturing. That's not a new phenomenon. So that in order to embrace those, I think the real challenge is Korea needs to change its business structure. Uh, Korea is a tremendously innovative country, but its business structure is too hierarchical Mm -hmm. and too rigid mm -hmm. and uh, it needs to find a way to have its culture change as quickly as the technology is changing. So if you wanted one specific e example, mm -hmm. in large Korean companies mm -hmm. the one thing they all have in common is there's the conference room mm -hmm. where the tables are shaped like a V, yeah, yes, yes. very formal <laughs> and the boss right, sits yeah. at the front and says, the first thing Korean companies need to do is demolish those conference rooms, get rid of them, get flexible tables. If Korea doesn't change its business culture, it will miss the next wave of innovation. So for Hyundai Motors, driveless cars may destroy all those regular cars and parking lots and all, all that, as well as a Capco. Microgrids will come in instead sure. of one company delivering all the electricity, fossil fuel electricity, so what would happen to those companies? What well, do they have to change? Quite simply put, technology tr triggers rev you know, revolutions. Mm -hmm. And every time one door closes, another door another opens. Door. Mm -hmm. So with robotic cars, it means in the long run we may need less cars because they'll be shared more. We all know that. And so companies have to say each, each new abundance creates a new scarcity. Mm -hmm. And so you have to look for the new scarcity that comes out of the new abundance. Okay. If we have robotic cars, well, there will be a new kind of scarcity that comes out of that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's personalization of the automobiles. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's the specific experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, those companies like Hyundai or Kia may have to be prepared for rental companies or your know, car rental. Well, we can see the, for example, we can see the general shape of what robotic cars brings. Fewer cars on the road, more car sharing and the like. The question is, how long does that take, time-wise? You know, William Gibson famously observed, the future's already arrived, it's just not evenly distributed yet. So it's even possible that companies can make a fortune in a declining industry, as long as they know it's declining. So. An example, Blockbuster in the United States, video rental business. Mm -hmm. In the mid-1980s, everybody said, we're going to mm -hmm. electronic delivery, no more videotapes, no more CDs. Right. Yeah. And Blockbuster wisely said, you know, it's going to take a while. And if we're really smart, we can make a fortune slowly going out of business while everybody else loses a fortune trying to get into our business. Mm -hmm. So one most important question to ask mm -hmm. is, First, you have to identify the technologies on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Secondly, then have to say, how quickly are the impacts really going to come? Yeah. Some impacts will be sudden, some will be long term. And so mm -hmm. there may be parts of your legacy business that will be very profitable, even as they're shrinking, and they can be used to fund the, the new industry. So mm -hmm. don't confuse the macro with the micro. Oh, okay. The macro vision is pretty clear. I mean, we could talk about robotic cars, we could talk about pharmaceuticals, we'd all pretty much agree on the macro. The micro details are what make business success and failure. And, you know, Mark Twain once said about writing, the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between the lightning and the lightning bug. Lightning bug. <laughs> yeah, and, and you want the lightning, yeah, not the lightning not the bug. Right. So really the big challenge for managers and executives here is not to just get the macro. That's easy. Mm -hmm. It's how do you translate that out into a timeline where you avoid surprise. Mm -hmm. That's the real challenge. Another question for... One other thought. Oh, okay. 
in Silicon Valley, what I see, there's no shortage of vision here. Mm -hmm. and, and you go to any large company, everybody has a pretty good sense of what's happening in all these industries. Mm -hmm. What Silicon Valley does differently because of the startup culture is mm -hmm. we pursue the new space with passion. Mm -hmm. I've seen lots of companies say, oh yeah, I know, you know this is going to change. We need to do this. But they don't use passion and they don't use urgency because they're too comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so you... What really, really matters is the determination to mm -hmm. make it happen and the passion to say, we are serious about this. This just isn't one of a dozen other projects. We know this is the future of the company. Mm -hmm. That's why startups have an advantage over mm -hmm. big companies. There is a POSCO, which is a you know, steel maker, largest oh, yeah. steel maker in Korea. And Stone Age is gone, you know, bronze and now steel is gone. Graphene is coming. What do you think of graphene taking over steel industry and what do they have to prepare? Well, I like think we're going to be using steel for quite a while. Quite a while. But we're going to be making 10, it 10, in different ways years. and the like. And, you know, look at the shift we went from, you know, the old furnace style to mini mills mm -hmm. and the impact of recycling and the like. That there's a, there's a long tail to steel. But, yes, if you're growing quickly off a small base, it's going to be things like graphene. Mm -hmm. But graphene has issues of its own. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us time to figure out how to use it right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if 3D printing buildings are built, we have a large uh, companies, construction companies, who may be, I don't know, is this well, but destructive Cor You know, Korean companies have more experience with construction companies. Pro uh, you know, prefabricated buildings than mm -hmm. we do in the United States. So, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity to, you know, prefab buildings are halfway towards 3D printed buildings. Mm -hmm. And so, this is an opportunity for mm -hmm. Korean manu construction companies and manufacturers to go global. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good idea. Go global. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Um, so, good. So, we are coming to the uh, where? The Florida. <laughs> oh, Next Orlando. One. Orlando. The world Future Society. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Well, of course, he's, he's, he's a pillar there. I usually bring 30 to 40, you know, Koreans to the uh, wow. World Future Society. Oh, good. So, we are the second we'll largest there. company, I mean, country, who brings three members. Sure, no, I have, I have fond coming. memories. Are you coming?